so it's not quite a geometric sequence. If there were no n here, we'd be better. But the next most common test we use is the um, ratio test. So let's try that. So the ratio test says that if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, absolute value, is less than 1, then it'll converge. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in uh, uh, n plus 1. So we've got x minus 3 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times 4 to the n plus 1. And since we're dividing by the original a sub n, I'm just going to flip and multiply. So n times 4 to the n over x minus 3 to the n, the absolute value of this whole thing. Let's clean it up. So what we're going to have is if I've got an x minus 3 to the n plus 1 over up here and to the n down there, you can subtract those exponents, which just give you x minus 3 to the 1. Um, let's see, same idea. I've got a 4 to the n and a 4 to the n plus 1 down there. I'll leave you a 4 on the bottom. And the top, you've got an n, and on the bottom, you have an n plus 1 surviving. Now, because this limit is only based on n, you, anything else is a constant relative to it. So I can pull out x minus 3 over 4, limit as n goes to infinity, n over n plus 1. And this limit is just going to go to 1. Uh, you can tell because it's either the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom match, so you take the uh, coefficients, 1 over 1. Uh, you could do it um, by dividing everything by the highest power of n. You could do a little L'Hopital's rule. However you see that, this whole thing is going to go to 1, leaving you with the absolute value of x minus 3 over 4. And that needs to be less than 1 for this thing to converge. So what we're going to do is um, multiply both sides by 4. So the absolute value of x minus 3 must be less than 4. So negative 4 is less than x minus 3 is less than 4. Add the 3 to the other side. Negative 1 is less than x is less than 7. And so now, um, what we need to do is we're almost there. We just don't know whether we can put equal signs here or not. Because when this thing equals 1, it's inconclusive. It could converge. It could diverge. So we have to test the endpoints. So we're going to test um, x equals 7. So if x is 7, then we're going to plug that into here. And we're going to get n equals 1 to infinity. 7 minus 3 is 4 to the n over n times 4 to the n. So those n's cancel, and you're just getting 1 over n. Well, now this is the harmonic um, series, and we know that the harmonic series diverges. Um, it comes up so often we kind of have it memorized, but you can also know it as a p series where p is 1, and that's going to diverge. So I don't get to put an equal sign underneath the 7, but let's test x equals negative 1. And if I put in negative 1 for the x up here, I'll get negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 to the n over n times 4 to the n. And so when this cancels, this makes negative 1 over negative 1 to the n over n. And so this is an alternating harmonic series. And if any time your series alternates, if the original series didn't converge, this one still has a chance by the alternating series test. So, and that one says that if the limit of the part that's not alternating, like without the negative one part, if the limit goes to zero, which of course it does, and it's alternating, then, um, what do we want to say, and it's, and it's decreasing, I think we have to say. So we need to know that um, 1 over n is less than, 
is greater than 1 over n plus 1, so the, this term is bigger than that term. So if you plug in an n and an n plus 1, you can tell your series is decreasing. So it's going to... So those are your criteria, that the limit goes to 0, which has to be true for all series, uh, that it's, and that it's decreasing, then your alternating series will converge. And so, yay, when x is negative 1, that'll converge, so I get to put an equal sign underneath there.